In a world that is increasingly divided and polarized, it can be difficult to know what is true and what is not. We are bombarded with conflicting messages from the media, politicians, and even our own friends and family members. It can be tempting to retreat into our own echo chambers and ignore anything that challenges our preconceived notions. But as followers of Christ, we are called to a higher standard of truth. We are called to seek out the truth, to speak the truth, and to stand for the truth, even when it is uncomfortable or unpopular. So, join me today as we explore what it means to live in a nation in need of truth, and how we can be agents of change in a world that is crying out for the truth because we need truth in our country. Jesus said that knowing the truth can make us free. But sometimes when we know the truth, we pretend not to know it, because we don't want to take responsibility for living according to it. No matter what you do, truth doesn't change. We are a nation in need of the truth. People are arguing about who should be in control and who needs more or less money. But no matter how much we argue, the truth won't change. Celebrities and sports stars think they can solve problems because of their fame and wealth, but they are actually overfunded. We argue a lot about what is important and how to fix things, but the more we argue the less likely we are able to solve the problems. When we look back at the past 240 years of our nation, we can see that the way we solve problems is different from any other place. This is because this nation was founded under God, and it's only when we all work together in unity that God will provide us with blessings. We are the United States of America, and it's only when we're united as one that things run smoothly. Our blessings do not come from a political party, an economic plan, or any person. They come from God in heaven. He is the only source of true blessing. We often focus on treating the symptoms of problems instead of finding the cure, and this cure is God's blessing. People say that the high rate of murder is because we don't have enough gun control, but it's actually because of sin. People also say that our national debt is a problem with the economy, but that's not true either. Greed and selfishness are sins and they cause problems in our world. When Abraham Lincoln was running for office, he said that a nation with people who don't get along cannot stay together. He said that America was in danger of falling apart from within, not from outside. His words are still true today. We think we can fix the economy, education, race issues, and evil on our own. But this is not true. We cannot make America great again without help from each other and God. Jesus said that without him, we can do nothing. It is time to put Jesus in his rightful place, not just as an idea or something we talk about, but as someone who is truly at the center of our lives. As a nation, what we need is truth, not just truth that makes us feel good or comfortable, but truth that really changes us and helps us grow. That truth comes from God's word alone. We should not rely on religious groups, political parties, or personal opinions to guide us. Instead, we should submit ourselves to God's truth and let true freedom spread throughout our country. People also often talk about being tolerant but do not actually practice it. We wear it on shirts and bumper stickers, but this does not really lead to peace. Even in the Middle East, where people have been fighting for a long time, being tolerant will not solve all the problems. If we want to reduce violence in our cities, we need more than just tolerance, we also need patience. Sometimes people use the word tolerance but don't really mean it. We can accept each other's differences of opinion, but if we are presented with facts that challenge our beliefs, we may become intolerant. This can happen when the truth makes us feel uncomfortable and we want to ignore it. Sometimes people say they don't understand what the Bible says about giving. The Bible says to give and you will be given too. It isn't really confusing, but it can be uncomfortable to accept. We sometimes ignore it because it is not popular, even when we know that if we don't apply the truth it won't help us and will actually weigh us down. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 that if you are feeling burdened or stressed, you should come to him. He will give you rest. The yoke Jesus was talking about is like a scale that is balanced. The other word used for the yoke and scale is zagon, which means it needs to be balanced for things to work correctly. The Bible tells us not to join with people who don't believe in Jesus. People don't want to do the hard work that Jesus asks of us, but he says it's worth it because if we do his work, he will reward us with more than we can imagine. 
nobody can take away the yoke that someone else puts on you. When you accept Jesus as your master, he will put his yoke on you and it will give you rest. This yoke will also help to protect you from poverty. If you don't accept Jesus, then this world's culture will put a burden on your shoulders instead. Jesus said that we should choose his yoke because it gives peace and protection. God said that he will not keep any good thing away from those who look for him. You may not understand why bad things have happened to your family like sickness and death, but if they died as believers then they are more alive now than ever before. When the trump of God sounds, we will see them again, something no one in this world can promise. Our forefathers made great sacrifices so that we could live in a free country like America. America's future is uncertain and we could lose our freedoms but God has a plan to keep us safe. The Bible says his words act like a lamp and a light to show us the right path. This means that if we follow God's truth, he will help us make the right decisions in life. Nothing can surprise God so we can trust him to guide us through every situation. Are you walking with God? If you walk with him, then his word will be like a lamp to guide your way. It's like a light for your path. God is like a gentle shepherd who stays close by and warns you of danger. He'll tell you when something will cause harm and pick up the pieces when it happens, but ultimately, he wants you to take some time to relax. The Bible says some people think they are doing the right thing, but it can end up to be a destruction. We see this in the world today with people ruining their businesses, marriages, and dreams because they believe in themselves. Jesus can help us by freeing us from wrong things. The question is not whether you are doing something wrong but which way you choose, the one from this world or the one that Jesus tells us is easy and light. Even though we know what is true, many of us still ignore it. Two pharaohs from the Bible were not religious. They did not follow God. But one of them had a dream about seven fat cows and seven skinny cows coming out of the Nile River. The skinny cows ate the fat ones and he was worried about what it meant. He found a prisoner named Joseph, who was filled with God's spirit, and asked him to explain his dream. This story is similar to what we experience in our lives today. This is because a righteous person was talking to an unrighteous man and shared the truth with him. The Pharaoh had to decide what he would do with the truth. Joseph then explained that there would be seven years of abundance, but he should store it instead of selling it. This is because there would be seven years of famine afterwards. During this time, Egypt could become the richest nation in the world because other nations will buy grain from them. They will give them their land and even their children and grandchildren. Joseph told Pharaoh a truth that set Egypt free from famine and poverty. This made Egypt the wealthiest nation at the time. Pharaoh was so thankful for this and said something special about Joseph. In Genesis chapter 41, Pharaoh said that he couldn't find someone with the Spirit of God like Joseph, even though he was a pagan who worshipped idols. He saw something spiritual in Joseph that connected him to something bigger. Joseph used what God gave him to help set Egypt free and make them one of the most powerful countries. In Exodus chapter 1 and 8, there is another Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. But this point is wrong because we talk about our founding fathers and we don't need to believe only what historians say about them. John chapter 3 verse 1 says that those who do good deeds are right and pure. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, which were written by a group of men, include these same ideas. We have freedom of speech, the right to meet in groups, freedom to practice religious beliefs, and the right for everyone to be treated equally and find happiness in life. Although we often forget about these values, they are an important part of our country's foundation. The Founding Fathers didn't know anything about COVID. They knew about different illnesses that we don't have to worry about now. For example, there was a pharaoh who didn't know Joseph, but the pharaoh before had made him a prime minister and built pyramids to show how much he had done for Egypt. The pharaoh also built silos to store grain for seven years. Did these things last forever? Did history books talk about them? Did Pharaoh go to teach something different than what really happened? Pharaoh knew the truth about how powerful and successful Egypt was, but he did not believe it. He made a big mistake by not listening to history. God had promised to bless those who blessed Abraham's family and curse those who cursed them. When Pharaoh began cursing Abraham's family, Egypt started declining and never recovered. 
the fact that Pharaoh's body ended up in the Red Sea shows that God is true to his word, even after many years have passed. It is time for us as a nation to stop ignoring the truth from God's word. The Bible teaches us that there is only one truth and it brings blessings. This truth has held our society and nation together in difficult times, like during the Civil War when Abraham Lincoln asked for people to fast and pray on a national day of prayer. On June 7, 1944, Franklin Delano Roosevelt prayed on the radio for seven and a half minutes. He didn't refer to God as the man upstairs. Instead, he started his broadcast by saying Almighty God. Franklin Delano Roosevelt said that if the United States returned to following the teachings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from the Bible, like loving those who are kind to us and punishing those who are cruel, then we would see God do great things in our nation once again. America is in trouble and we have to work together to make it better. We can't wait for someone else to fix it, we need to make the change ourselves. The only way that will really help is if each of us follows Jesus and the Holy Spirit in our lives. Don't waste time pointing fingers, instead, put your strength into serving Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and body. God wants us to be a church that shows His light and love in the world. He wants us to thank Him every morning for renewing His mercy and saving us from sin. We need to decide today if we will serve God or not. God is not waiting for us to get it perfect before we can pray. He wants us to pray now and fight for those who need help. We should call on God ask him for help, and follow his plan. It's time to tell the truth, God is alive, and his enemies will be defeated. We need truth as a nation. This can be hard because it might mean admitting that we were wrong or it might require us to change. But when we know the truth, it will make us free. We should turn away from our bad behavior so that God can heal our land. Today, let us turn away from pride, arrogance, and self-will. Let us show love for God instead. We should also pray that Christian values will return to our nation. Pray that America will become a God-fearing nation again. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you more Word of God to the world. Here is another sermon you will love. Thank you, and God bless you.